Hey everybody, this is Matt and we're at Texas Toast Guitars. Thanks for watching. Wanted to do a quick video today about how you are probably using sandpaper incorrectly. So right about now, everyone's going, what do you mean I'm using sandpaper incorrectly? I've been working with wood my whole life. You don't know what you're talking about. <clears throat> and you know what? I do this too. And I had to stop myself uh, the other day from doing exactly what I'm going to tell you not to do. Uh, and that's the reason that I wanted to make this video. I don't know anybody who actually likes sanding. So when I see guys use abrasives and sandpaper incorrectly, I'm like, man, you're just spinning your wheels and you're taking a lot more time than you need to. I was reading uh, some guy's woodworking blog a while ago and he said, you really only need about three different grits of sandpaper. That'd be 80, 150, and 220. Maybe, but his assertion was that as one piece of paper starts to get um, used, it becomes the next uh, level of, of abrasive. Mm, not really. So let's back up a little bit. Sandpaper is sold in various grits. This is a piece of 180. And what 180 means, in case you don't know, is for a square inch of paper, there would be 180 particles of abrasive on this sheet of paper. 80 grit would be, you know, 80 particles per square inch. If you had one sharp rock that was one inch by one inch, well, you'd have a one grit sanding paper. Um, so the higher the number, the finer the grit paper. Um, so if you're using like uh, 80 grit sandpaper, for example, and you use it and use it and use it and it starts to smooth out, well, it doesn't automatically become 100 grit paper. It just sort of becomes used up 80 grit. Um, so the, the little points that if you were to look at sandpaper on a microscope, they just get rounded over. Uh, so the paper gets smoother uh, and stops working. Uh, it doesn't go to the next level of, of abrasive. <clears throat> so one of the things that I like to say in this shop here is uh, use sandpaper like somebody else is paying for it. Um, I change paper as often as I can. The other day I was working on some necks and I had like an old crappy sheet of 80 and it was all beat to hell. Like, see, look at this, look at this piece of 180. See like all this stuff right here, it's, this, this is worn out. This, I actually picked this up off the floor for this video. Um, don't use old sandpaper. Switch sandpapers a lot. Switch sandpaper just like a piece that you're using by hand on all your tools. Um, you will save so much time if you just put new paper on stuff and let the tool do the work. Another thing I have been told my entire life and I always, <clears throat> I always have to remind myself to do is always use some kind of sanding block. This, for example, this is a, this is a sanding block. This is a piece of cork. This is actually pretty cool. I think I got this at Rockler. Um, if it gets wet, it doesn't really, doesn't really affect it that much. And if it does, you can always sand it back and make it nice and flat again. So this would be used for, you know, wet sanding, but you can use this for, um, for dry sanding too. Another thing that we use, obviously, you know, bits of uh, wood scrap and stuff, we can make those into different custom size sanding blocks. Um, this cork, it, it's not exactly very flexible. It's got some give to it. And of course, you know, a piece of plywood sanding block has none. One of the things that we like to use a lot, um, I stole this idea from, from Fender. They use, it looks like they're using flip-flops. It's just closed cell foam that they back the sandpaper with. Um, in the summertime, it's real easy to go to your local home center and find like a, like a garden mats or something. They're like, I don't know, maybe like 16 inches by 10 inches, usually green. And you can cut those up into whatever sizes you want. And man, they are really slick for, for doing sanding. You know, like in, um, let me point here, like you can get into some of these, these areas here that it's harder to get in with a block. So uh, give those a try. Always use a sanding block. And uh, when it comes to using a sanding block, I always like to fit the paper to the block. I will actually take the paper and crease it along one edge and fit it to, to the block. I don't know if you can, you can see here how it's, oh, this isn't a great example, but if you had a new piece. So as opposed to just wrapping it around, see the difference here? It, it, when you're, especially if you're doing like radiuses on fretboards, this will save you a lot of time and aggravation. Another thing that I see, I see guys working by hand way too much. Now, I like working by hand as much as the next guy, but if you can make a power tool do the job for you, again, lots of time saving, um, especially on like, you know, the faces of guitars. We will use orbital sanders 
everything from, you know, it comes right off the, uh, the thickness sander. I think we got 60 grit belt on that. We'll go with 80 grit paper, 100 grit paper, 150. We'll go, hell, we'll even go up to 1200 on the wet sanding portion with an orbital sander whenever we can do that. Um, and that pays off huge, huge dividends. Uh, huge time saver, use power tools as often as you can. Finally, what's up with this like sanding everything to 6,000 grit? All you're really doing at that point is polishing the wood. Um, this is gonna, probably gonna irritate a lot of people who go on the internet and like to say things like, I sanded this to 800. Well, what's the payoff for that? I will sand um, guitars that are getting a translucent finish, I will sand to 220 and then right into sealer. Uh, if it's getting a color coat on top of sander, sanding sealer, I'll probably sand that to 180, maybe 220. Then we'll shoot sealer on everything. Then we'll sand the sealer to 200. So imagine this, I sand all my wood to 600 and then I, sand, and then I spray a bunch of sealer on that and then I gotta sand that to 600 or what, eight, 12? Shit, before we go on the polishing wheel, we'll sand to 1,000 and that's usually with a random orbit sander. So, um, you know, then the polishing wheel takes care of all the rest and we get great results. So you don't have to sand too much. You're not impressing anybody by, you know, going online and saying what you sand to. Just make the damn guitar look cool. So if you like the video, give us a thumbs up. Or if you think I'm full of shit, leave a note in the comment below. Um, and uh, you know what? If you had fun watching, help the channel grow by subscribing. This is Matt at Texas Toast Guitars reminding you that if you're so smart, build it yourself. That's what I do. Thanks for watching, everybody.